So good morning and welcome to another episode of Better Business, Better Life. Today I'm joined by Peter Stewart, who's the founder of Lynx Recruitment. And Peter is based here in Auckland, has got around about 20 staff in his business, um, but has quite an interesting background, actually started in real estate. So welcome to the studio. Lovely to have you here. Good morning, Debbie. Yeah, good morning. <laughs> so good. Hey, um, keen to hear, because you did not start in recruitment, right? You've got quite yeah. an interesting backstory. Tell us a little bit about how you got to where you are today. Yeah, so started in recruitment, uh, sorry, started in real estate and um, yeah, just, um, I was in Christchurch, uh, Christchurch, New Zealand, obviously, and they had the earthquakes down there. Yeah. I was still quite, yeah, I was pretty young when I got into it. I think I was 19 or something when I got my real estate license. Mm -hmm. So once the earthquake hap um, happened, nobody knew what was happening with sales. No one knew what was happening with insurance. And um, I remember my boss at the time, he's like, mate, get out of here. So like, you're too young. Like, there's too much going on. Like, get out of here. So I uh, went to Gold Coast, um, did um, some pretty crunchy door-to-door -door sales over there, which um, really built character and resilience. So when you don't say door-to-door -door sales, you mean literally knocking on people's knocking doors? Knocking on people's doors. Mean what? Solar power. Oh, wow. Which in <laughs> Australia you would think is easy because there's yeah. so much sun, but it, they're, they're, you know, it's still very expensive. And yeah. Um, um, Australians at the time were very suspicious about government grants because they had had multiple government grants before it and gone well. But um, yeah, and then did my time in the Gold Coast, came back to real estate and long story short, got a job in an office at um, uh, Ray White uh, in Remura up in Auckland and yeah, um, worked there working for the office, for the business, not as a salesperson, um, which was cool because I got, um, got exposed to a lot of um, conversations from quite a um, quite a successful business person who was yeah you know, really dynamic and learned. Um, I don't think she thought that I was learning a lot from her, but um, I learned heaps from her, and that was that was really cool. Yep. And then, in, long story short, a lot of my friends were getting like jobs at corporate businesses and law firms, all this stuff, and I was like, look, I need to get serious here. So, um, got a job at Hayes Recruitment, and yeah, first first day I was hooked. Cool. So, yeah. so how long ago was that? Uh, about 10 years now. It'll be 10 years, yeah. Sure. And so you worked through a number of different recruitment and you worked for yep. a startup recruitment company and then went yep. backwards and forwards a couple of times. Yeah, yep. so started at Hayes, joined a recruitment startup. So I was their first full-time recruiter. Um, then the business partnership there broke up, so I went and joined another recruitment firm mm -hmm. um, and then went actually went back to the original startup and it was great to see how that business had grown. And then um, eventually had that conversation with my director and said, hey, look, I'm so sorry, but um, I've got to do this for myself. Because <laughs> you said to me you were actually starting to help them build up a new market. Yeah. So you suddenly thought, what am I doing this for somebody else for? Oh, and look, my, and, and my old boss, I, I absolutely loved him. But, and uh, we, still, we still catch up all the time. Well, probably every couple of months we go over there. Yep. And um, I remember when I had it, he said, oh, Peter Stewart, your time is not great, mate. But... Uh, He's like, I need to do this one day. So um, he's like, Let, let's stay on as mates. He's like, don't touch my staff. Uh, <laughs> like, okay, <laughs> fair enough. So um, so that was cool. And yeah. then um, naively started a recruitment company. And that must have, that's a big jump, right? Going from working for somebody to going like this for myself. What are, you, um, what are you most proud of in terms of, you know, taking that first leap and where you are now? I think if we look at all the things that we've done well, I think we've given a lot of, people we've exposed like when i first started obviously need to hire recruitment agents yeah no one experience would come and work for me because our brand our branding was very different and untraditional for a normal recruitment agency and i was unknown like i didn't really have any management experience i didn't remember, i've been recruiting a while but i wasn't recruiting a long time and i certainly didn't have any management experience and so recruiting experienced recruiters was pretty much off the table day one so i was hiring people that had just literally just wanted to get into recruitment and here i was showing them how to do it um so i think i'm i'm yeah but look back and i think yeah all the opportunities that we've given people um to get into it yep. um ha have been have been really cool um because it's the thing with recruitment it's not just doing recruitment getting the sales it's the skills that you learn mm -hmm. um it's you're dealing with business people you're dealing with candidates and you're talking about really serious you're talking about the career which is really serious Yep. Um, the actual work that you're doing is is valuable. It is important. I think 
as recruitment consultants probably get a bad name for a number of reasons. And as I mean, I use car sales. Uh, <laughs> I actually got called to use car salesman at a recruitment industry event Did you? Um, by a lady. So that was, that was, that was cool. But, <laughs> so, um, but you know, it's, it's, it's a really tough job. It's a really tough industry. And um, yeah, you know, and, and that's been awesome. And I think, um, so it's been cool to expose people to that. Not so much, like in many cases, like 90% of people that get into recruitment are not there in a year. Yeah. So the industry has a massive turnover rate. So yeah, basically for every 10 people that get hired in recruitment, yep. after a year, one of them will still be there. Wow. So it's huge. Okay. It's huge. And I, you know, so. And that must come as a That was exhausting. Right? So yeah. exhausting. So the first 18 months, I hired a bunch of people as recruitment consultants yep. who had no experience. I had no experience man- managing. And basically made every mistake possible. Um, was frustrated by how it was going because I, do you know what I mean? But it was it was all self inflicted. Mm-hmm. So I was I was I think my intentions were good. My execution was horrendous. Um, but um, you know you learn by your mistakes. So Absolutely. so that so that so that so so that was cool. And then I think you know if I look at what we've actually done well, what I'm really excited about, and. Um, I think the brand that we've come up with and I think the way that we position ourselves in the market um, now is really cool. Yeah. Like, I, you know, I look at the brand we've got now, the company we've got now, the marketing that we're doing, um, you know, how it's, how it's coming across and how it's been received too. Mm-hmm. It is really exciting and it's starting to build a lot of hype and it's actually getting to the point now where we're having those recruiters I was telling you about before, like I can never, I can I never dream of They never dream of hiring these people. They don't want to come work for me. Yeah. Now, now they're knocking on our door, Excellent. Yep. which is really cool. So that's, so that's been, yeah. So that, that, that's probably the biggest one is, is, is building a home mm-hmm. for great recruiters who are really passionate about themselves, want to do well, yep. want to set themselves up, want to take advantage of their hard work. Um, do you know what I mean? And, and, and really re- get rewarded for it and, and um, go hard. Cool. But it hasn't always been selling either, has it? Because, no. I mean, you started in 2018. Yes. You had a really good sort of, you know, what, a year and a half or, or whatnot. And then, of yeah. course, the dreaded COVID hit. Yeah. Yeah. So there's an old saying, uh, even a turkey can fly on a tailwind. Um, so I, I, I wouldn't say I was exactly a turkey, but um, that boom market that we had pre-COVID certainly covered up a lot of... Um, mistakes that I was making, shortcomings that I had, you know, around management systems, processes. We had nothing. Our guys went specializing with we generalists, basically making every mistake possible. Um, but because the market was so buoyant, we were able to get away with it. Yep. And we had a couple of good, we had a couple of guys in there actually producing pretty good. So, and we had a lot of overheads because they were young recruiters. They went on massive salaries. We had an, an old villa on College Hill next oh, yeah. to the cab, which yep. is, a, that's, a, that's another story in itself. <laughs> And um, and that and that allowed us to basically, I could make whatever mistake I want, and I wasn't going to get caught out. But the moment that COVID happened, mm. and the revenue tap was absolutely turned off. Yep. Um, the consultants hadn't been trained properly. They weren't specialising. They didn't know their market. We, I didn't know how to handle the situation. Um, you know, you know what I mean. I'd never been for any, but no one had been for that. And I was asking people that I thought were new better. And they had no advice either. So it no, was none of us knew what, what to expect. Yeah. It's pretty unusual for, I mean, the people who went through all the plague and stuff are dead now. So we didn't get yeah. <laughs> so, to their knowledge. So, yeah. so being in a situation, and we had grown aggressively and like, you know, I was out to prove a point. Um, yeah, we'd, we'd grown a lot. So we had about nine staff when it hit. We'd only been going 18 months. Yep. We were all permanent business. We had no temporary business, which is, um, you know, as a recruitment company, you want to have that mix. Uh-huh, yeah. Um, so... Basically, yeah, I absolutely got caught with my pants down. So. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely got caught. So, so, and so that's okay. Cause that massive, massive, yeah. And that hit a lot of people, so I wouldn't yeah. get too concerned about that. But what did you learn from that? And how did you then put into um, yes. you know, the future your learnings for building the business back up again? Yeah, absolutely. So I think what's, what came out of that um, that's been really important is specialization. Yep. So when we were... We were trying to be all things to all people, which is such a, you know, looking back, it's almost embarrassing. Like, it's such a rookie mistake. Yeah. Um, you know, we were, we were trying to be all, fi- you know, like we, like we were recruiting all sorts of stuff. Like just, you know, we'd have one recruiter. Yeah. He, he'd be doing a, he or she would be doing an administrator here, a senior project manager here, an accounts 
foreseeable person here. You know, it was just a mess. Yep. And then they were all in the same industry, talking to different clients, and it was so scrappy. Right. So having that moment where we were forced, obviously, to reduce headcount, we were able to put people into... And the other thing, too, we were like, well, we only had certain demand for certain things, which is obviously a bit close. So yep. even in the middle of COVID, we had lockdowns, all this, all this crazy stuff was going on. Our clients were still, hey, if you've got any quantity spares, and we were like, oh, everyone's trying to, like, no one can find people. Like, they're like, yeah, well, they still need quantity surveyors. <laughs> yeah. And there's, and even though people were getting made redundant, the people that were getting made redundant were, they weren't, it was people just getting rid of loose change. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And um, so there was still really good demand for that. I was like, oh, shit, you know, we should be focusing on this because, you know, whether the times are great or bad, They're the demand is still there. Yeah. And, um, and, so we thought, right, well, let's specialise in that. So we really got deep into that market, got our databases sorted, got things cleaned up. You, you know what I mean? Started messaging in a certain yeah. way. And then we, you know, we had another guy who was specialised in mining. So he was doing jobs in Australia, but from Auckland. And it was quality surveyors and miners drilling diamond drillers in Australia out of all places yeah. that actually got us through COVID. Okay. Without that, we would have been toast. So, so it kind of forces you to really be really clear about who that ideal target client is, yes. um, and then get really specialised that, and also yep. have specific roles for different people, right? So having yes. accountabilities for people that they had their own swimming lanes yeah. to work in. Yeah, I mean, looking back, it's I mean, it's almost embarrassing that we had such a higgledy piggledy business, and then just you know to have that moment where you know get taken out back and given a hiding essentially, and you know from a business point of view, yep. Um, yeah, you walk out of there a lot, you know, you're like, okay, um, pick yourself up. And yeah, specialization was a massive one. Mm-hmm. And um, and just looking at those skills, you know, which, you know, those skill sets, which the market demands from us um, and understanding why they demand from us and actually understanding the value that we provide and why we provide it, not just like, you know, and they were just, which is such a funny market. Before, yeah. before the podcast. Well, pre COVID, it was such a funny world and market, particularly yeah. for recruitment. Like, it was just, it was really buoyant. Like, there was a lot of, you know, there was a lot of money in the system, I think. And mm-hmm. then, and obviously, like last year, you know, there was too, you know, with lots of house prices and stuff. But, like, you did not need to be a good recruiter to make good fees. Mm-hmm. Whereas last year, strangely enough, even though there was more money in the financial system, um, and there's lots of opportunity lots of people needed staff it's actually a lot harder to deliver them so you had to be better right but pre-covid yeah you could you know time again i wish i'd pop up the equipment shop <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah you could you know I, I remember i mean this should have been a red flag and um yeah i don't know if these people are thinking this thing but i remember going to an industry event and um there were a couple of people that had just started a company on waiki and they were just gonna yeah it was just like a generalist agent on Waikiki, yep, just doing whatever, and, I, and you know, like looking back on it now, like that's crazy. You know, they'd spend a whole bunch of money like getting it set up and stuff, and just like so, as many mistakes as I made, like I, I yeah, I don't know that come. I mean, God, no. well, okay. that happens a lot. I, mean, <laughs> I remember like I mean, it's probably thriving over there. <laughs> no, and I think it's one of the things we teach our clients is you know you have to be very specific about yes. you know who your target market is and what you actually offer them. And you said this about the clients you work with. When you go into a person, you ask them, you know, what makes you unique? Yes. A lot of companies actually struggle to tell you what makes them unique. Like, why would that person come mm. work with you? Well, it's actually quite a hard question, you know, and it's scary to be unique. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not actually, um, like, it takes more courage to be unique and do something different than it does to do what everyone else is doing. Yeah. So, but, if, you know, at the moment, we're in a market where if you're not unique in terms of your so we're talking about attracting talent to a business, mm-hmm. you know, so I'm a business person, I'm struggling to get talent. How do I get talent to my business? You've got to have good points of difference. You've yep. got to have a unique selling point. Um, you know, if you've got a great reputation or you're someone or you're doing something unique, then that's easier. You know, it's a tech startup or it's something really exciting. But if you're a, you know, if you're a business, if you're an auto electrician, <laughs> you know, you're an auto electrician only hunger. Like you're, that's very hard for you to, you know, make yourself different. Mm-hmm. Or a building company just looking for carpenter, you know. Um, so the, you've seen, I'm seeing businesses now that are um, really using social media to get on top of that. Yeah, they're creating up Instagram pages, they're creating followers, you know, and they're posting videos of the guys on a Friday going out for a surf or doing stuff like that, and they've got them all barbecuing and. That's really smart. Like that's good business. And any business can do that, but most don't. Right. 
cool. So what you're doing is you're kind of reversing it from being a um, and going out there looking for people to hopefully having people wanting to come and work for you, just like they do with Lex, right? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, if you can, it's a lot better to attract candidates mm. and take them for a process, show them what you've got, get really good expectations about what it's going to look like, how it's going to be, then make the recruit rather than trying to rip somebody out of somewhere else, paying them, you know, more per hour or you know, x amount of you know, some of the pay rises that I'm seeing are extreme at the moment like, really? you know okay. like we're talking about people going from 75 grand to 130 grand well um which is crazy yeah you know, in some crazy. sectors there was one in um what industry it says that might have been there might have been a health and safety job yeah, okay. so two things could be true there one that he's getting a great salary where he is and yep. two he was probably very underpaid mm -hmm. so yeah you know, i mean you might be going from health and safety admin through to a manager and yep. just had that but um but money isn't everything, right? Because we know this. Um, I've got clients who've had, you know, had staff for a long, long, long time and they get offered a whole lot more to go work for somebody else and they just, they don't want to leave because they actually enjoy where they are. So it is definitely a motivator, but it's not everything, is it? I think we'll, I think time will tell on that one. And, and what I mean by that is because of the environment right now where inflation is a serious factor, yeah. I think that has potentially moved the needle quite a lot between people really valuing that high rate mm -hmm. more more in the sense that you know like pre-covid absolutely i'd agree with you where it's yeah. like um but you know like yes it offers 20 grand more but um you know i, I just it. i just love it here the people are good and my life's not that hard like i don't have that much pressure you know mm -hmm. i'm not struggling to pay my bills like yeah you know, i'm not struggling before groceries but um in terms of cost of living but maybe in the it could be different in other parts of the world but certainly in this country cost of living has has really been a factor so we're starting to see people leave major centers for regions because mm -hmm. the you know uh Christchurch at the moment is really um of interest because you can buy a house down there you, know, you could be a young couple 750 grand you've got a four bedroom house you know what I mean and you can buy groceries and you can have a kid and they can run around the backyard and it's safe and there's not mm -hmm. that much commuting like you know in Auckland that gets you a studio apartment yeah if you're lucky, you know, <laughs> South, <laughs> South blow a story, you know, like, you know, yeah. in, you know, in the cover of darkness. <laughs> um, so that's, that's a major. So, um, but we digress there. I mean, yeah, money's money will help you get them, get people to you. Yep. It won't help you keep them sure. unless you're paying way over the odds, in which case loyalty probably is for sale to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. Um, but if all you've got is money, yeah, you need to have that, that special source. Um, depends what sort of business you're in too, I would say. Because we talked about the whole, you know, working from home. You know, if, you, if you're an architecture firm yep. and the people there are creative and they love the work they do, you you, you know, so architect, architectural firms and engineering firms and even construction firms to a certain extent that are working on, let's say, the sexy jobs in town. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? They're doing the big towers, they're doing all this stuff. They can actually get away with paying juniors a little bit less because they want to work on that project. Right. They want that project on their CV. It's like... um you know, like a Snapchat or these fast accelerating tech startups. So we'll give you 0.001% equity yep. and, you, and you'll work for us for 40 grand and you'll work 80 hours a week. <laughs> People are willing to go on that journey. So, um, yeah, it, it, it's just, it's it, all really, it really depends on the person. If someone's in a sales driven environment or they're an accountant, they're just going to look at the the numbers. Yeah. You know, well, quantity surveyors, particularly we do, we do a lot of quantity surveyors. Yeah, we're talking they about are very yeah. money driven individuals because they literally sit there all day negotiating contracts yeah so okay fair enough right yep so what so we talked about you know obviously uh, being able to go out and do some surfing being able to have beers on a friday what other things make workplaces attractive the working from home things become a yep. a big thing isn't it for certain jobs flexibilities yeah um so i think yeah we we're saying before so i think the number one search term now on seek it's um work from home yep. or remote or a combination of those you know that's really important it, the fact the things that used to People used to search the most were, yeah, obviously money used to be the most important factor. Mm -hmm. Career progression used to be the most important factor. But since COVID, flexibility is a massive one. Um, some jobs obviously don't, it's not possible. They need to be on site. Site manager. Cause, yeah, because yeah, they're doing a physical job that mm -hmm. needs, you know, whatever. But there's a lot of stuff in our economy that can be done remotely. So um, employers that aren't offering some sort of flexibility or remote working or day from home for a week or even a shortened week or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, seriously uh, limiting their talent pool. So, do you know what I mean? You, you might have 10 candidates available now that you've 
you're saying, no, nah, they've got to be there nine to five. We're in the middle of the city. You've got to pay for your own parking. You like you literally might as well just put up a sign and say, don't work for us. <laughs> no, no one's going to anyway. Yep. Um, so remote's massive. I think being part, everyone's got different factors, you know, like if somebody's got, you know, somebody's got, yeah, someone's someone's got two kids. That's their world. Mm -hmm. They're comfortable paying their mortgage payments, providing the kids. They want to be there for them. They want that flexibility. They're not going to be money's going to be massive, but being able to be home at three thirty yep. on Wednesday for the to kids sport is far more important than that extra five or ten, fifteen grab. Mm -hmm. If it's a young couple trying to get into a house, that money's everything because they're going to need that salary to go to the bank for a mortgage. Yep. So that becomes a massive motivator for them. So it is different. Um, interestingly enough, like when we actually are recruiting and we're going through that process with candidates and we say, you know, I always say, yeah, particularly in construction, for example, I say, look, what, like, we've got five things here. You know, you've got money, you've got projects, you've got flexibility, you've got culture, and you've got career advancement. Like, which ones are important? You can't have all five. Because yeah. this is not a thing. <laughs> uh, it's another project triangle, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, so I so say, which ones are important? Some yeah. might say, look, you know, we just had a, a baby. This thing is way more expensive than we thought it was going to be. Like, I need money, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Well, I can put you on this project at this place. It's going to be big hours. The turnover's high, but you'll get paid. Yep. Yeah, sweet. That, I'm willing to suck that up for two years mm -hmm. and go through that. Uh, or someone might be like, oh, you know, just, yeah, culture's massive for me. You know, I like, love my sports. You know, I love my, Yeah, and this is really a people person. It's like, oh, well, I can put you over here. Look, to be honest, this doesn't actually pay as much as the next one, mm -hmm. but their staff tenure is amazing. You know, they've got repeat clients. It's a real community there. You'll be looked after should something go wrong. Mm -hmm. um, they're not transactional. And someone's like, oh, yeah, cool. That's And they'll sacrifice a couple of dollars an hour or 10 or 20 grand on the salary or whatever to go work there. So yeah. uh, it's different for everyone. There's mm -hmm. definitely no, it's not blanket. Different industries will certainly have different, different personality yeah. types that are all suited to it. So there's some sort of themes there. One of that, we're about to kind of go into, you know, potentially a recession. We don't know how big or long or deep it will be. Um, I'm not a big believer. I don't think it'll be that huge, but you just, I don't, who knows? I'm not, I haven't got my crystal ball out. Yes. What do you think, what impact is that going to have on recruitment? Well, people will be, well, we've been in a market now where people will literally like, in some jobs, for example, uh, they're like, just send anyone. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, you know, like we, you could literally send a monkey. Right. Um, and they just, and they'd, so and they'd be stoked. Yep. Yeah. They'd be absolutely, they'd, 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 they'd tuck a hard hat on them and away, guys. <laughs> and uh, everyone would be happy. But I think when the market, that's where it, it'll, it'll have, we'll have to see. So if it gets to the point where people, um, their P&L is getting seriously affected, mm -hmm. and obviously wage is going to be the biggest cost for most businesses. Yeah. So that's the easiest place to make cuts. So if we see redundancies, um, across the board, that is so. This is what we saw in COVID. Mm -hmm. That is a very, it's a pretty wild environment. So, um, seriously affects confidence. Um, that that could be quite wild. If we start seeing, um, you will get corporate restructures. You're getting that anyway. Yeah, all that the happens time. every eighteen months. <laughs> that happens every eighteen months. So I don't know if we can put that down to economics, but um, the problem this time will be the amount of disposable income that's available. Um, and there's also been a lot of malinvestment as well. If you look at some of the people, like particularly in, in most markets you look at, there are a lot of people who have been promoted because they're there. Mm -hmm. A lot of people that have been promoted because they're the only ones willing to put their hand up. Yep. And it's just been needs must. It's not been this person's got the skills, this person's got the experience, uh, this person's suitable even. It's just yep. been like we need, you know, um, we need a bum on a seat for a certain role. And that's just, that's it. That's all that's available. So that's where it goes a bit more into, I guess, um, it's a bit more about merit at that point. Do you know what I mean? So the cream rises to the top. So if someone's having to do a restructure or, you know, they're obviously going to keep their, what they perceive as their highest performing, most important people, mm -hmm. and then and they'll lose that. So in terms of for recruitment, there's, there'll still be parts of the market where it's so skill short that there'll still be demands on that. But it could it will make it it'll make getting jobs harder for sure. So people won't have as much choice. Uh, they won't have as much bargaining power. You know when they go to negotiate a salary, yeah. um, they won't have um, uh, yeah once again not not as many options. Only thing is the factors around recruitment at the moment, particularly in New Zealand, 
I can't speak for other countries, but it sounds like the the developed world's pretty much the same in all cases. We've had 30 years of people not doing technical trades yep. or going to university and studying arts degrees or BCOMs or marketing, which is, it's, a, it's you know, the best three years of your life. Yep. <laughs> um, but unfortunately, a lot of these degrees have no real utility in the real world. And so you've seen massive underinvestment in people doing trades, right. engineering, IT, all these all these areas are super skill short. Accountants, you spend the most accountants, they can't keep up. Lawyers can't keep up. All these, all these sort of traditional jobs um, really struggling. Builders, you know, sparkies, all this stuff. Yep. Um, nurses, you know, there's this, this serious issues, issues in this country. Yep. Um, so you've got... Well, and that still hasn't changed. Like, we had obviously all that restrictions on people coming into the country when we had COVID. Yes. And it hasn't really lifted. Yes, yeah, has that, yeah so, so you've got, yeah, so you've got misallocated investment and training yep. in terms of doing free university degrees, which has basically got everyone to go do these. Then you've got no immigration yep. or very low immigration for the last two years with COVID. Mm -hmm. um, we, I think this country is just finding out now how reliant we were or are on, on migrant, on migrant, yep. on migrant workforce for, for just stuff like nursing, like, um, you know, even cap, like just. Well, trades. nursing home stuff, trades, and also I've got to go up okay. to a vineyard. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they've had, literally had to go and pick that. I mean, they're in yes. their late 60s, early 70s. They thought this was a retirement oh, thing no. where they just had other people coming in and doing it, and now they're out there picking grapes. It's crazy. It's yeah. crazy. You can't get anyone's, and they're paying good rates. Mm -hmm. um, and then you've got, yes, yeah, so, and then you've got, a, and this is the big one, which is starting to, people are starting to talk about this now, what a serious problem we've got, aging population. Right. So you've got the boomers now. Um, they've got these businesses the the kids don't want them because um, you know the kids have seen how much work they've put into this whole business yep. and how much stress that they've had to take and all the rest of it so they don't want it the staff don't want it yep um they're not really sellable all of these businesses mm -hmm. and then you've got you've just got an age of population where people are retiring and once again those people that are coming through they're not trained in these sorts of things that are retire uh, that are retiring so I think at the moment for every five I don't know this verbatim but for every five tradies retiring, you've got two being trained up. Wow. So, huge deficit. Uh, you know, if you just think, it's just the things like, too, like, um, you know, HVAC um, electricians that can come and fix your heat pump when it's yeah. broken, or guys doing the sewers, or, mm -hmm. you, you know, all this sort of stuff that people don't really think about. Yeah. There's, or the fixing the lines, you know, when the power breaks out, all this sort of stuff. These aren't jobs that have been, um, they're not sexy. They're not rewarded that well financially, but mm. they're what makes a the world go around. Makes the world go around, <laughs> yeah. and and um, yeah, we're gonna yeah, we're probably gonna feel the effects of that. Mm. Um, so it's gonna be really interesting. So I guess people with skills, people with people with skills that are you know, they they, they want to work hard and get on with it. They're gonna be absolutely fine. And I think that, yeah, as, as we go through this sort of moment, I think yeah, there will be a rotation where they get start getting really well looked after. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, society really starts rewarding those people financially, and even from a status point of view, you know, it's like we start looking at tradies and we start looking at these guys going because a first of all you know how much money they're making because yep. the demand for them is so high and they're qualified and oh shit, you know, all these old people have retired now and now there's only like so many retired people. So hopefully, you know, us as a culture, we actually start going, hey, these guys are awesome. Like, thank you so much. Um, nurses, nurses, they better immortal. Nurses, no, I mean, that's crazy, right? Yeah. Like, and you look at, um, no, get into politics here, but you look at all, <laughs> yeah, you, know, you look at the money that gets spent in certain areas, and and you know, you got these nurses protesting for a pay rise and stuff. They're overworked, they're stressed, you know. Mm -hmm. All the A and E's are understaffed. People are waiting like, you know, um, hours and hours and hours. It just it, something's not right, and uh, um, we have a really dysfunctional labour market in, mm -hmm. in this country um, and yeah it's not going to get fixed overnight so I think if people depending on what people do for a living they'll be fine it's people that are in I don't know cushy middle management roles that could, be, could, be, could, be, <laughs> could be done without yeah, yeah. they're, they're going to be first to go how deep it cuts I don't think it's going to cut that deep <laughs> Because we've got really, see, really low unemployment at the moment, so I think we're going to be probably reasonably I, okay. I can't see builders going out of work. Residential is going to get hit really hard, potentially. Yeah. Um, residential development. A lot mm -hmm. of people have been making a lot of money in that space, yeah. and they're all about to potentially struggle for work. But there's so much other work that needs doing. Yeah, in all the regions, there's all this. There's all 
there's schools, there's retirement, there's all this sort of stuff that needs building. So mm. it'll be interesting to see how that goes in that market. But yeah, it could be could be a weird year. What about permanent versus contract versus temp? Mm. Um, you know, as we go into potentially a, a time we've got to tighten our belts and look yes. at who we're actually doing, is there an opportunity to replace permanent staff with contract staff or with temporary staff? Yeah, I, I'm surprised we don't. Um, New Zealand doesn't have a massive culture of contract. Mm. So temp, temp's always big because temp's always, that's sometimes the only way you can supplement a project or a workforce, you know, yep. um, or it's just the nature of the work so short term. Temp's really good, like, so if you've got something that's really low skilled and really high turnover, mm-hmm. temp's good because you can temp someone and if they're great, hire them full time. Yeah. Yeah, cool. So that so it's a really good runway. Just out of interest, legally, how does that work? It's okay it's to fine. take somebody temporarily, so they're a, a, yeah. a, a temp staff member yep. and then you offer them a full-time job. And so it's typically okay. for an agency. Not a fixed contract, because fixed contract maybe to, to, to temp to permanent is a that's danger, a fixed isn't it? Term. Yeah, fixed terms. So you don't see, fixed term is more like white collar, I would say. Yeah. So, so you probably you probably divide them. So blue collar, you've got like temps. So, yep. you know, so we might have somebody ring up and say, hey, we've got a building site. We get into the end. We need site clean up. We need four laborers. Yep. And they're just going around with brooms, whatever, for two weeks. That's cool. So that's temp. Mm-hmm. Now, there might be someone in there that's amazing. And they go, hey, we want to go give this, you know, he turned up here every day. He was from it. It's early. Yeah. You know, he's got a great attitude. He's bubbly. Bump. Yep. He was just, he was awesome. Everyone loved him. Like, we want him on our team. Like, what, what, what have we got to pay it? Yep. You know, and that's awesome. Um, that's where temp's great. Um, a uh, fixed term contract is probably more like, um, yeah, it might be more like, Building yeah, something contract. like IT or, oh, yeah. you know, or like, or banking or maternity covers, a common one, you yeah. know, someone's like, or just a job that needs doing, like, hey, we need you in here for six months to build a HR system. We currently don't have a HR system. We need a HR system. Go get a HR expert, fixed term, three months, six months, nine months, whatever. Yep. Um, that's cool. And then permanent is obviously, uh, in New Zealand in the last, well, for, for the last 10 years, really, other than that dip in COVID, yeah. that six months sort of thing where things were a little bit uncertain. It's, a little bit uncertain. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's always been permanent. Um, but if you go to other markets in the world, uh, particularly the UK, contract is a lot more sort of, it's a more educated marketplace around that, I suppose. If you look at parts of IT, contract's more, um, yeah, a lot more used. Right. And, yeah, even at the senior levels, you know. So, yeah. Um, we might see more of that in New Zealand. I'm surprised we don't now. So we have a little bit of flexibility. I mean, it's almost like having, I liken it to um, in the old IT days, you know, you'd have servers off uh, side that you could ramp up or ramp down as and when you needed them. Yes. That's what your contract staff actually gives yeah. you to do is bring in people as and when you need them for certain particular skill sets. Yes. And then they're gone when you don't need them anymore. Yeah. I think, um, the, I guess there's a cost associated with it. So yeah. something like um, construction, for example, if you need a quantity surveyor, mm-hmm for a project and the project's 12 months but you know after that 12 months you've got a ton of work coming through yeah because there's massive demand for what these guys do at the moment you're just like well we just get on a salary then we then they're in our team they're in our culture yeah. the downside of a contract of course it comes in gets a lot of your ip um it's not there for a while you know it could walk out of all your systems and process mm-hmm. for all you know yep you know so so there is a risk there um and you know they're, they're not really they're not might not integrate with the team and the culture and you're trying to build that so so it depends on the job, really, but um, yeah, more established markets like the UK are like they use heaps of contractors because it's all project based. Yep. It's like you know we're doing this project, so it just makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, but once again, there's a lot more financially. It's a lot more costs. Yeah, a lot more costs. Sure. Um, so yeah, con- yeah. There's, okay. there's pros and cons, but yep. we might see a more contract rich environment in New Zealand if things do get and the economy get unstable. Yeah. Certainly, people will be like, "Oh, well, shit! You know, we've got this job. It's got six more months. Can we get someone on contract?" Yeah. And there'll be guys that people are available to do it. Yeah. Whereas right now, a lot of the only other thing with that though, a lot of employers will want full time. Right. So when the market starts going down, what will happen? We'll start getting guys hit us up and go, "Oh, hey, you know, I've been contracting. Um, don't really work at the moment. Wouldn't mind, you know, got a kid on the way. It's always, it's always <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I got a mortgage. Yeah, you know, so you know, I want a salary. Sell, yeah. I want a salary job now. So that's where the market kind of goes two separate ways. With the employers actually wanting contract, mm-hmm. and the contractors actually wanting security. Right. Yeah. So you've all, all of a sudden you've got this weird dichotomy where it's like yeah. that wasn't happening before because he the contractor could have made way more money, but then they got he didn't want to pay it because he's like, well, I've got so much work. Yeah. I don't want to pay a contract. I want a full-time staff because mm-hmm. I've got this. And then all of a sudden that paradigm it's changes where both parties want something different. Yeah. So 
That'd be interesting. Okay, three top tips. So let's just say we've got you know people listening in who are thinking about recruiting. Yes. What are the three top tips you would say for when you're considering recruiting? How do you make a recruiter's job easier? Yes. How do you make sure you get the right people to do yes. the right jobs, et cetera? Yeah, so there's a couple of things. I think the first thing is you've got to actually decide what it is you want and need. Yep. So, and, you know, and get quite, you know, first thing is put together a job spec. Yep. Um, and, it, and you'd be surprised how little thought often goes into this. Like, what are you actually trying to do? So we'll go see a client and be like, what do you want? But, oh, we need, um, you know, we need this. Like, oh, what, what for? What are they doing? And they'll be like, oh, we're doing this. And, oh, how's their performance going to be measured? And th- these are the things you need to be thinking about. You know, yeah. what, 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 are the, what are the duties? What are the expectations? Yeah. So you know, as the hiring manager, how's their performance going to be measured? Yep. A lot of the times when we're actually going through the initial phases with the employer, they can't answer those questions. Yeah. So it's like, oh, and then what you actually find is you all you you just needed an assistant. You know what I mean? Because yep. you, you know, you did, or you just needed you just needed this. Or mm-hmm. sometimes, hey, what you what or you know, you, you, you're you bringing a knife to a gunfight here. You need something a lot more established. This is going to cost a lot more, so to tell you. But, yeah. you know, you, I know you're just trying to spend 80. This is going to be a 150 higher to get what you what, what you want out of it. So that's really important. So we, we use the thing called the accountability chart where you literally kind of say this is what the role of that person is and they have specific measurables that yes. says, okay, this is what we're going to hold you accountable for yes. in that role. So that's the first step is making sure yeah. you really understand what you want and need. Yep. How does it fit into the overall structure with the other people around you? Yep, yep. 100%. And, you know, they might be like, oh, you know, we need a coin space. Oh, what's he doing? Oh, we've got this $40 million project coming up. And so what do you want to spend? It's like, oh, this is a, that's a, that's a, that's a serious role. You know, this this is going to be, this project's going to be a business that turns over $40 million over the next 80 months. Mm-hmm. And you want to put a junior on it. Yeah. It's like, you know, so I'm sorry to tell you, but this is what you're going to spend. So, yep. uh, so there's defining it, really important. Then there's the, the marketing. Right. So attraction. So you've got two options there. You either headhunt, you know, use a recruiter, headhunting firm, um, go and go and actively find candidates, tap them on the shoulder, so to speak, tell mm-hmm. them what's so great about your company and why this should change. Or you've got the other option, which is attract. So you do the marketing, you know, you put on job boards, all that sort of stuff, LinkedIn, networking, all that kind of thing. Yep. To create a shortlist, and so there's so there's that. So I think do most clients do a mixture of both. Or is it yeah, one well, or the yeah. other? Yeah. Well, they actually, as a um, as a team effort, they kind of work well because if you're trying to headhunt and at the same time you're running a campaign, mm-hmm. um, the candidate's going to think a couple of things. To be fair, they're like, oh, obviously no one's no one's there, no, no one sent the CV to the ad. Yep. Or they might think, um, oh, I don't know about that. That's really cool. Thanks for telling me. Yep. Well, I don't want to miss out on that. So the advertising will create some sort of FOMO. There's a deadline as well, right? You've got a deadline to actually apply. It's a great urgency. It's yep. um. Yeah, recruitment. Um, a big part of being a successful recruiter is you need to, or or even successfully recruiting staff member. I'll take the recruiter out of it. Just you're a person in your business trying to hire someone. Yeah. <laughs> there needs to be a level of urgency in that process. If you're going to attract good talent and capture them, yep. It's not doing any sales thing, right? If you if you, if you know if you want to get your client to sign up to contract, there needs to be a level of urgency in there. Mm-hmm. So so yeah, you need to set some dates around it. What you're actually, what the purpose is, and if you can, what the marketing will allow you to do is to create a competitive environment where, which will then put you in control of the process. Yeah. Because right now, the tail in, you know, in, in the developed world, the, 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 um, you know, the tail is wagging the dog in yep. terms of, you know, employers trying to get talent. You know, it's, it's absolutely the other way around. It's talent choosing what employer they want to go work for. Mm-hmm. So, um, so yeah, so that marketing will help you create a, larger talent pool mm-hmm. and then and then your field fee of course is obviously get them over the line you know get get in negotiating that deal how that needs to look find it but also finding out what they're wanting out of it so if they're this is what i like about attraction because if yeah. someone's looking for a job you know they're motivated and they're looking and there's a reason for them looking mm-hmm. if you go and tap somebody up that's it's fine it's fantastic and obviously that's a massive part of how the world spins yeah but you're then having to go forward and go, hey, this is what's great about us. You know, you're, you, you're having to sort of, you're, you're reaching, you know, you're like, hey, this, this is what's great about us. This, you know, you should come work here. You, you know, this is the best company ever. So yeah. And switch from what you're, you know and are used to to switching to something new. Yeah, yeah. And, and you do run the risk of potentially, and I've seen a hell of a lot of this in the last five years, is where companies will oversell an opportunity. They will oh, oversell, yes, yeah, so yeah. they will oversell what their culture looks like. They will oversell... Um, 
what their pro, you know, what they do you know what I mean? Like, and then we'll have, or they'll say, oh yeah, we're going to give you equity, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. And then six months later, I said all the time, they were cannot ring up and say, I've been promised all this stuff and it's yeah. not happened. So expectations need to be clear. And that's where doing the marketing will actually help because then you're getting people that are looking. Mm-hmm. Do you, you know what I mean? So, so the people that are actually actively in the marketplace looking for new opportunities, you say, hey, here's what we've got. This is how great it is. It's a computer environment. Lots of people are applying for this. We've got a deadline. I think you're going to increase your chances of getting a successful hire mm-hmm. um, a lot more than going out and saying and, and wrenching someone out of a business who may or may not be looking. And that's where you, and then the other problem with that is you get counter offers. Right. So let's say you're, you know, you're looking to pay 100 Someone's like, look, I'll do it for one twenty. So you say, cool, I'll pay you one twenty. Then his, go his employer boss. goes, yep. well, shit, if I got to, I got to go pay a recruiter twenty grand mm-hmm. and lose this guy six months productivity. If you stay, I'll give you one thirty. Yep. I'll give you, yeah. You know, and it's just, and then, and then they've got that relationship there. This in the office, and it's like, you know, I can't believe you're leaving. Like, when you're telling you, know, you know, and yeah. it's just really, really tricky. So I think if you can to find what you need, do some great marketing, get a video done. Like the companies don't do this. Get a video done. Um, and then, and then, yeah, make sure that, yeah, we are possible, make sure the expectations are really good, make sure everyone's on track, they know what's expected of them. Um, you know, if they can do a situation where, you know, they come and meet some of the team members before a contractors, you know, like we try and, where possible, we'll try and, you know, if we're recruiting someone for links, we'll shoot down the road, there's a bar down the road, we'll go have a couple of drinks with them. Yeah, just some of the guy, whoever's around, like, you know, don't have the whole no, whole army turn up. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, we had some of the guys turn up for a drink and there's something about meeting them in that non formal setting. You just I don't know, you just see this whole other side of them. It's really it's, it's bizarre. You know, because when you're in this, you know, arranged marriage that you're about to enter into, you know, it's so weird you know the real best behaviour, you're all but, kind of trying to yeah. Oh, it's amazing. You got two you spend two hours with someone, say first interview, second interview, which is rare in this market. Yeah. Um, psych test maybe, yeah, references maybe. Uh, and then you're like, right, we're going to work together for the next five years. It's actually kind of insane when you think about it. Whereas, you know, these big contracts good because you can kind of meet someone first. Um, like dating for your marriage. <laughs> it is, it is. Well, that's right, right? You go to, on two arranged dates and then decide you want to get married. Basically. Mm-hmm. So it's pretty wild when you think about it. So, uh, but yeah, those would be the big, big three. So yeah, get it get it off. Well, you're on trying to give me a measure to attract yeah. and advance a bit of both. Um, and giving them a try. Yeah, sure. Some roles, there's only going to be 20 candidates available in New Zealand. Yeah. And that, that, that is what it is. So you're gonna you're gonna have to go out there and forcefully yeah. get your message across, or yeah, and in markets like that, you either pay more or you train more. Right, those yeah. are your two options. Sure. Now recruiters get a bad rap. Yes. Why is that? Um. So the number one thing I think that we hear is, oh, you know, I apply for this job, no one came back to me. Mm-hmm. So it's there's a lack of comms, or the or they're in the middle of a process and. It drops out. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's the communication things probably, or, you know, I applied for this job and no one told me. Um, the, uh, I guess the unfortunate re- reality is, it, like recruitment companies, uh, their businesses at the end of the day, yep. so they have financial targets. So every recruiter that works for a recruitment company will have a target that he needs to hit. Yep. Typically in New Zealand, that's going to be somewhere around $20,000 per month. Mm-hmm. Um, it's hard to reach that target if you're spending your days politely letting people down, <laughs> uh, so so this is like I mean I mean you know this this is something that people aren't going to want to hear. Yeah. And um, but it's it, the truth. It, it's the reality. And the other thing too, I think most recruiters, because recruiters are sitting there, um, and I probably sound like I'm making excuses for recruiters. And to be quite frank, I'm 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 happy to sit here and take the hit for the recruitment industry. <laughs> um, it's been good to me. So uh, like. If, you know, a, a, you know, recruiters face so much rejection on a daily basis, mm-hmm. you know, it's almost like one of those things where there's like a circle of trauma there repeating itself, where it's like the recruiters aren't going back to the candidates and then the candidates aren't getting back to the recruiters and the clients aren't getting back to the recruiters. No, everyone's, everyone's kind of bullshitting each other. Like no one's really like, you know what I mean? Like it's, yeah. just, it's, it's just a bit of a funny environment. In the perfect world, you would get an application. It's not successful. Ring the person and say, hello, thank you so much for your application. Yep. You're not successful today. This is why. If I've got anything else on file, I'll definitely let you know. Let's catch up for coffee. I'll give you some advice. You, you just, we're not 
fairy job mothers. Like we, mm-hmm. we need, like it's commercial based. You've got to go out there and make money. If you need career counseling, you need a CV servicing or you need help with your career in the direction and getting a role. There are other services for that. A recruitment agency, a specialist recruitment agency, is not that place. No, you're the matchmaker. You're not there to actually um, well, a client the person are, kind of. Yeah, and no, our clients are paying us for us, you know, and nine times out of 10, what we do is specialists, right? So yep. someone's coming to us for a client surveyor. You know, if somebody comes through and they've got absolutely no experience in construction or even accounting, mm-hmm. you know. Um, we can't help well, them. It's, it's not, <laughs> I don't think we have a moral obligation to go back to them. Yeah. I think. Um, Fair enough for trying their luck, uh, but I don't, I don't, I don't see. So, so, so that's probably the number one thing. And then once again, it all comes down to those financial targets. Like mm-hmm. that, that's going to create the behaviour. So, you know, the beha- the incentive as being a recruitment consultant is to make deals. And this is the same for a real estate agent, anybody in sales, any, any business, any, any business yeah. you know. So, I think we have recruitment because it's quite a personal thing. It's a job, and rejection's really tough. So, yeah. you know, and, and as recruiters, we get rejected all day. So we get pr- very fixed very quickly. Yep. A lot of people that we come across haven't had a rejection. any any <laughs> massive rejection in their life. Yeah, like yeah. they've never, you know, and then you know, you know, they get rejected or they're not being got back to, or, and they take it really personally. They get quite emotional about it. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I guess I've had emails like that and a couple of one star reviews. Um, you know, it was just stuff that was just it was just yeah. so far out of the realm of possibility for us to give that person. The time and and it, I would love to. I'd love to have a customer care team of fifty people that were like talking to all our clients, talking to all our candidates, everyone that had been for our experience. How do we make the experience better? What do we do? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, we don't have that resource. Yep. Um, I wish we did, but maybe one day we'll be big enough or we'll have that kind of resource, and we won't. Those well, there's a different way of doing it, perhaps. I mean, maybe yeah. there's another way of doing it. But anyway, and then and then some recruiters, to be quite frank, are just um just quite not. I wouldn't say dodgy, but like do some pretty, unscru- you know, unscrupulous stuff. So, in it for the money. <laughs> so, you know, and um, it, 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 once again, it comes to the territory. So someone's super money hungry. Yep. You are in a position where you, you can, you, you can, you know, like you could place a candidate into a client and then three months later, you're like, hey, What's going on? Like this yeah. other job, and, yeah. What you, yeah. And we hear clients all the time will tell us, "Oh, you know, we, you know, we, we spent X amount of dollars with this agency. Six months later, they ripped them out, placed them somewhere else." Mm-hmm. So unscrupulous, yeah. Unscrupulous, yeah. But there's normally two sides to that story, mm. just quietly, because quite often it can't. Like you will get a call from a candidate, is like, "I've been here six months. What's been promised hasn't been delivered. Mm-hmm. The culture sucks. Mm-hmm. The projects." Uh, completely behind. Do you know what I mean? There's all these things that obviously the employer wasn't saying. If the employer just said, hey, look, we've got a bit of a battle here. We're going to pay you well. We need to help us get through this. Yeah. That's a challenge. You know, once again, it's kind of, it's just getting people under the right pretense. Yeah. Good question. Um, so what's your ideal plant look like? Who do you love working with? So for us, it's, it's, um, we're dealing with some bigger clients now, but I, I do love working for SMEs, like companies that are growing, 22, 20 to 50 staff, maybe even more, yep. you know, um, where we're dealing with the owners direct. Mm-hmm. You know, that's really, is really cool because then we can build a relationship. We understand the, um, their business. Um, I've got, you know, I've got one client. I don't get to recruit as much these days, but I, ha- I had a client that, you know, must have been two or three years in recruitment, meet up with them for another client. And basically, they they went for a real growth spurt, and I was like their recruiter of choice, and I recruited all these people. So I'd go into their office, mm-hmm. I go in the office, be like, oh yeah, it's, yeah, all these people, yeah, all these yeah, people there, yeah. like yeah. you know, I go there front, you know, and it's just like, I'm like you know, how so like a team you've built, yeah, to, yeah, and, and it's and that's really cool. So so businesses where we can have that sort of impact and really help move the needle mm-hmm. in their organisation, that's cool. Yep. Um, don't always get that's quite rare to get that opportunity these days, but that's that's what we really like. There's some good mid sized businesses out there that are you know family owned or privately owned yeah. are definitely sort of you know starting to yeah. move the needle in yeah, the I've, industry. I've always thought, you know, like if we could be like a champion for small businesses and help them compete yep. for great talent mm-hmm. that might otherwise be taken up by bigger companies. I kind of almost feel that that's like almost like been a bit of a Robin Hood sort of 
So yeah, do you know what I mean? If we, yeah. if we can, if we can. I tell you, yeah, we talk about the pros and cons of poaching. Yeah, if we can poach someone really great from a big corporate and put them into a small business, and it transforms that small okay. business, yep. develops all the people in that small business, helps their careers. Do you know what I mean? It takes the thing from twenty to fifty. That's and, cool. That's, and that's where you're making a huge impact, right? Yeah. yeah. Then it's not just about the fee. Like the fee's going to be the fee wherever. Yeah. So you know, given the choice, that's the sort of business that we'd love to be able to help. But. Perfect. Yeah. So if somebody's just sitting here listening and wants to get in contact with you, how do they do that? Do that? Um, just, yeah, our website, linksrecruitment.co.nz. Yep. Um, or just email with me, peter at linksrecruitment.co.nz. And um, yeah. Awesome. Hey, look, I really appreciate you being really honest about some of this stuff. I think sometimes we bullshit ourselves around some of this stuff that's going on. So yep. I appreciate your honesty and Thank sharing you. that stuff. Um, just for, to recap, so the three things you can do, make sure you know what you want and how that first one measured. Um, use a mixture of attraction, which is you going out there and actually putting your best foot forward and ensuring that your business is in the best possible light with some headhunting if required. And then, yeah, but you need somebody to actually help you get them over the line and make sure that what you're offering is what you can actually deliver mm. um, and that both parties are happy. Yeah? Yep. Perfect. 100%. Well, thank you so much for coming in. No really appreciate it. Thanks, um, look forward to kind of following you with interest and, and seeing where this re this recession, so, where yeah. the other R word goes. Will it be big? Will it be deep? Will it be sh shallow? Who knows? But yeah. Uh, we'll follow Everyone will be wrong. That's all I can say. Yeah, yeah that's right. It's <laughs> guaranteed. <laughs> cool. Hey, thanks, Peter. Appreciate your time.